Now we are going to talk about an important topic, sudden infant death syndrome. This question was not asked for quite some time before it started appearing again in the exam. This is a counseling case and this is a handbook case as well. Those of you who have not read this case on handbook, I highly recommend that you read this on handbook. And I want you to pay special attention to two things. They have mentioned two critical errors in this case. The first is not being empathetic while explaining the condition to the mother or the parents. And the second is not explaining about the investigations and different procedures involved in the investigation of a baby's death. Now, these are some crucial clues by the handbook about what you're expected to do in the exam. Because handbook specifically mentions that you have to be empathetic. And not just that, it actually gives you some examples of how you can be empathetic. If you read the case, towards the end of the case, you'll find out that they say that you have to offer to the parents or the mother that you can consult or you can speak with the coroner to find out what is going on with the investigation and you are ready to provide support to the family members as well. Often what happens in counseling cases is many people think that being empathetic is all about saying sorry or please try not to worry, I will try my best to help you. These are good, these things are important, you have to communicate well, you have to show that you actually care about the patient but not just in words you have to show it in accents as well so when you are dealing with a case of baby's loss or let's say someone who has been diagnosed with a cancer don't just tell them that you will be helping them or their family members also mention that you will call the specialist or the oncologist to find out when is the next available available appointment so this shows that you care about the patient or you can say that I'll liaise with the lab myself to find out what would be the results of the investigation and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. So these kind of things show that you are ready to take some actions for the benefit of the patient and it shows that you are actually empathetic not just in words but also in action. Now coming back to the topic here, sudden infant death syndrome, what are the things we need to know and how should we counsel the parents? This case comes as a case of focus history taking followed by the counseling to the mother. So the first part of the case asks us to take the focused history and in the second part they are asking us to counsel the mother. So how do we do this? Let's talk about that. Focus history taking, what questions should we ask the mother? You have to understand that this is a delicate manner and you have to be very careful while asking the questions. So how you enter the topic and how you start questioning is really important in determining whether you will pass the case or you'll fail the case. So how should we start? As usual, we will use Iowa, we'll introduce ourselves and we will not ask open-ended questions here because we already know that this is a case of sudden infant death syndrome. So what we can do in the open-ended question part is we can tell the mother that I'm really sorry about your loss. I can understand that you might be feeling quite stressed are emotionally overwhelmed. However, I will try my best to help you or the family members as needed. And before I answer some of your questions, would it be all right if I ask you a few things about whatever is the name of the baby? So while talking to the mother, use the name of the baby. Don't say the child or the baby. Now, what questions do you need to ask here then? The questions you can ask here are, start by first asking about the age of the baby. You know that SIDS is more likely to happen between two to four months. So you start by asking about the age of the baby first. And that way what happens is you will get an idea about the developmental stage of the baby. Generally, the reason it happens between two to four months is because this is the time at which the babies start turning from their back to their front. So this is the reason why it is hypothesized that this ability of the baby to turn from back to the front is perhaps responsible for the suffocation of the baby, although this has not been proven. Now, the other question you can ask is general health of the baby. Or in other words, you can ask, was, let's say the baby's name is Andrew, was Andrew sick when this happened? Did he have any problems, any recent illnesses? Or did you have any concern about Andrew when this happened? And then after that, you reach the part of the birth history. Here, we may not be able to ask all the questions we ask in Bindsman. That's why we have to modify it a little bit. And we'll ask about birth history. And in the birth history, we have to ask whether he was born term or preterm. The reason for this is, if you remember, children who are born preterm are at increased risk of SIDS. That is the reason why we are asking this question whether he was born term or preterm. Then after that, we go on to the next question and ask, if the baby required any support after the birth. This is to find out if the baby was admitted to NICU or if the baby required any kind of resuscitation support so that we can get an idea about the 
post birth intervention required and we also need to ask about the immunization whether the age appropriate immunizations were done or not so this is to get an idea about the risk factors as we know that sids is associated with certain risk factors which we'll discuss shortly when we'll be counseling the mother now after this the next question to ask would be about the smoking exposure smoking second hand smoking is one of the important risk factor which can lead to sids so we'll ask about the smoking exposure we'll ask if anyone in the family smokes at home then feeding now if you're wondering why we want to know about the feeding method the reason for that is because we want to know if the baby was formula fed or if the baby was breastfed and why do we want to know this because breastfeeding has a protective effect against sids and that is the reason then moving forward the next thing is we have to ask about the sleep environment and this is another important question to ask we need to ask what kind of environment the baby was sleeping in so the questions can be these are important questions so i'll use another color where does the baby sleep any pillows do you do you use any pillows or do you keep any toys let's write any toys the reason is these things are important because they increase the risk of sids increase the risk increase the risk and the reason we are asking whether the baby was sleeping on the cot or with the mother is it is recommended that young babies are put on the cot and do not sleep with the mother as sleeping with the mother increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome so th these are some important questions that we'll have to later on use in our counseling as well to tell the mother about what are the risky behaviors and what are the safe behaviors so that that it can be avoided in the future then after that the other questions we can ask is temperature this is another important point and why it is important because what we know about the temperature is warm temperature is protective but if it is overheated then it can increase the risk overheated increases the risk that's why we want to know what is the generally what is the temperature of the room where the baby sleeps and we can also ask about swaddling or how the baby is wrapped on a piece of cloth to find out if it is done properly or not so that we can include that as one of the important points in our counseling the last important point that we can ask here is the family history and in the family history we want to ask if there is any family history of sids or not as having sids in the family increases the risk of subsequent sids now this is not related to our question here but recently one of the researchers in australia has found that if there is increased level of butylcholine that increases the risk of sids and this discovery has tremendous impact on how sids will be managed in the future so anyone with a high risk perhaps will be screened for the level of butylcholine and these kind of questions that we are asking right now we can proactively tell the parents beforehand however this is not yet the case in australia this is still not part of the policy but something good for us to know for the future now this is the history taking part so we have asked all the relevant questions and i don't think we'll have enough time to ask more than these questions just to go through these questions one more time so that i can highlight the key information we have to ask about maturity of the baby because preterm babies are more likely to have sids we have to ask about the smoking exposure as smoking increases the risk of sids we have to ask about feeding method because breastfeeding protects babies against sids we have to ask about sleep environment because sleeping with the parents increases the risk but sleeping separately reduces the risk using any pillows or any toys in the cot increases the risk temperature is important because overheated rooms increase the risk of sids so these are some of the association we have found with sids so we have asked all these questions now is the time to counsel the mother now before you start the counseling thank the mother for all the information she has provided and tell her that i know that this is perhaps a really overwhelming moment for you but there are a few things i think i should tell you if at any time you feel like you don't want me to go in details please let me know and then once the mother feels comfortable then you can proceed so you can ask the mother if are you happy to proceed with the discussion now should i continue talking about it now so in between this gives you an opportunity to engage in discussion with the mother and that is really important in counseling cases moving forward with the case itself what are the things we must tell the mother now now the important things here is we first start by talking about sids sudden infant death syndrome what is it it is a condition where the babies suddenly die we do not know what is the reason 
We do not know what is the reason it happens, but there have been several factors which have played either the protective role or can increase the risk of SIDS. So first we have told the mother what is SIDS, then after that we tell her what are the factors that can increase the risk or reduce the risk, so causes. So we have to make it clear to the mother that cause is unclear we do not know why it happens however what we have seen is there are several factors which increase the risk and there are factors which reduce the risk which are protective against sudden infant death syndrome so let's talk about these factors basically if anyone smokes at home let's talk about those things in red color any smoking increases the risk Toys, soft bedding, they increase the risk. Co-sleeping with the baby increases the risk. And increased temperature of the room also increases the risk. What are the factors that reduce the risk? Not doing any of these things, of course, reduce the risk. On top of it, the other things are breastfeeding, reduces the risk. Immunization or vaccination reduces the risk. Separate sleeping or sleeping on a separate cot reduces the risk. Foam mattresses reduce the risk as the chances of stuffing is less you can also tell about choking prevention or choking free environment not keeping anything on the bed that the baby can choke choking free environment is important that can reduce the risk and other than that we can also tell them about the bedding at least three side tugging so three side tugging so that there are no loose ends because of which the baby does not get entangled and there is reduced risk. So these are some of the important things you have to tell the mother about the causes, correlating this with the increased and the decreased risk. Now, as I told you, handbook has clearly mentioned that if you do not talk about the procedure behind this, a procedure of how this is done, then that is a critical error. Parents need to know what is going to happen because it can be quite emotionally disturbing for them to know that the baby will be autopsied or the police investigation will be done or they will be asked by the police and the coroner investigation will be done. The reason we have to ask this question is because they may feel that why are we being investigated? Why are we being questioned? And this can be emotionally quite draining for them. And that is the reason why you need to let them know that this is the part of the procedure. This is not because we suspect any kind of foul play. This is because so that we can gather more information and we can prevent similar deaths in the future. And that becomes actually quite helpful for the parents, for the family members to know. That is the reason we have to tell this. If you miss this, you will definitely fail the case. Because in the exam, they will tell you that the baby has had some kind of upper respiratory tract infection. They had flu or something. Thing. So you have to tell them that Andrew's condition was not the reason for this. So Andrew's condition was not responsible for what happened. As we have already said that it can happen without any reason too. So this is because, you know, they, we don't want them to have the burden that they didn't take the steps, necessary steps to avoid this. Then after that, you have to mention about two things. As I said that there will be police investigation. This is a very important point that you should not miss. And the police will ask the family members about the circumstances surrounding the baby's demise. This is part of the law and uh, this must be done. And coroner investigation is carried out in all cases of sudden infant death syndrome generally what happens is the coroner will carry out the autopsy and will do the relevant examination the reason is as i have already told you to find out the cause or association and at the same time to exclude other possible causes so two things to exclude the conditions which can lead to this and to find out the association with anything the baby may already have so that this can help in the future to avoid similar problems now offer the mother the help that if you or your family members you or family members need any support please get in touch we'd be more than happy to provide you with any kind of help there is help available for everyone and also tell that the coroner investigation report will come out in a few days i can get the result for you if you want or otherwise the coroner's office will contact you at a later date and you also need to tell that coroner will decide if any inquest needs to be held or not or in other words the coroner will decide if it has to be formally investigated or not let them know that this is generally not necessary in case of SIDS but this is the part of the procedure so to summarize this thing because this is an important part let me create a timeline here so what happens is first the police comes and will ask all the family members who are involved in the child's care 
about the circumstances surrounding the baby. So police interview will be the first part. Then second part will be the coroner investigation. Third part, or you can say the part of coroner investigation will be the autopsy of the baby so that they can find out if it was the death was because of something else or if there are any association that can be established to know about the causes of SIDS and the report of the coroner will be available after some time. You can get the report or the coroner office may call them and they will decide whether the inquest is needed or not. So these are some of the important things about sudden infant death syndrome. The first part of the question is about the focus history taking and the second part is about counseling the mother. While counseling the mother, important things are you have to tell what SIDS is, you have to tell what are the protective factors and what are the risk factors for SIDS so that they know how to avoid it in the future. Then you have to know about the legal aspect of this case telling them that they will be asked questions by the police, not because they are suspecting anything, but this is part of the legal proceeding. Coroner investigation will be held, autopsy will be done, and they will be notified by the coroner office at a later date. But if they want, then you can get the information from the coroner and help is available for them so that you sound empathetic and you have done some something empathetic for them. So this is about SIDS. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.